blanket. You want to read a story? Should we read a story? Okay, let's do it. Hey everyone. So this is Little History. Uh, we weren't able to get together and do Little History last month, so we are going to provide you with a version that you can do at home. So we're just going to read the story, and then I'll give you some quick instructions on how to do the craft for this month. So the story is called The Secret of the Kelpie. Um, it's a Scottish folk tale. Uh, a Kelpie is kind of like a fairy tale in Scotland, and you'll learn about what a Kelpie is. Um, just one thing before I get started, when you hear the word lock, that means lake, a word we are all very familiar with, right? Okay. The Secret of the Kelpie. Retold by Laurie Don and illustrated by Philip Longson. Every lock in Scotland, however beautiful, has its dark, cold depths. And every lock in Scotland has its kelpie. But it's easy to forget those dangers on a sunny afternoon. It's a beautiful lake, isn't it? One sunny Sunday, after lunch, the blacksmith's children decided to play hide-and-seek by the lock near their village. The oldest brother, Fergus, strode ahead to carve his initials on a tall gray stone. The youngest sister, Flora, covered her eyes and counted. Ninety-nine, a hundred, coming ready or not. But Flora didn't find her sisters and brothers. Instead, she found... What do you think she found? A horse. I found a beautiful white horse. Her sisters and brothers rushed out of their hiding places to look. The most perfect horse they'd ever seen turned towards them and snickered softly. Who does it belong to? asked Flora. It can't be from a farm, said Fergus. Not with that fancy saddle. So there's the kids. And there is the beautiful horse. Maybe it's a pretty princess's horse, said Agnes. Maybe it's a brave knight's horse, said Archie. Fergus looked around. Its owner isn't here right now. Who wants a quick shoddy? I do, I do. All the children put their hands up, all except Flora, who was looking at wet hoof prints on the dry ground. Two at a time, Fergus lifted Mari, then Magnus, onto the gleaming horse's back. There's room for more. This horse is bigger than I thought. He lifted Agnes up. There's still space. You can all go for a ride. Fergus lifted Archie up. What about you, wee one? No thanks, said Flora. Plenty of room for me, then. As Fergus climbed up, Flora frowned. I think that horse is getting bigger, so you can all fit on. Don't be daft, said Fergus. Come and have fun with the rest of us. Flora shook her head. There's Flora. She does not want to go for a ride. I think that horse came out of the lock, said Flora. I think you should all get off. The horse started to walk towards the lock. No, nice horsey, not that way, said Fergus. Let's go up into the fields. He grabbed the mane to guide its head away from the water. The horse ignored him and kept walking towards the lock. I can't turn it. Jump off, shouted Flora. Her brothers and sisters yelled. We can't jump off. We can't get down. We can't move. We're all stuck. Flora gasped. I know what that horse is. Uh-oh. It's a Kelpie, she shouted. Remember the old stories? It's tricked you onto its back. Now it's taken you into the lock to drown you and eat you. Fergus was still trying to turn the horse away from the lock, but his hands were tangled in its mane. The older brothers and sisters wriggled and struggled, but they still couldn't get off. They all started to scream as the horse's hooves splashed into the shallow water. Don't panic, called Flora. Let me think. This is the Kelpie.
As Flora watched the horse carry her family steadily away, she took a deep breath and leant on the tall gray stone. Let me think, her hand touched the old carvings. She bent down. The biggest carving showed an animal rising out of the lock. Wait, she whispered, I found something. A spade, an ax, and a sword. They're all made from metal. She looked up. The Kelpie didn't have an iron bit between its teeth, or iron stirrups by its flanks, or iron horseshoes on its hooves. That's the Kelpie's secret weakness, she murmured. It can't stand metal. Then she yelled as loud as she could. Do you have anything metal? So there is the stone. My penknife is in my boot, Fergus called back, but my hands are caught in the mane. I left my comb in the house, shouted Mari. Magnus yelled, I've got the back door key. He swung the key on its chain and hit the horse's flank. The Kelpie screamed and reared high in the air. Magnus and Mari and Agnes and Archie all fell off. But as the horse crashed back down, Fergus was still stuck with his hands tangled in the mane. So there's the key. That seemed to work for most of them, but Fergus is still stuck. The Kelpie trotted towards the middle of the lock. Flora chased after it, hoping to cut her big brother free. Fergus hauled back on the horse's head, slowing it down. Flora splashed through the water, trying to catch up. The Kelpie waded deeper and deeper into the lock. Flora reached the Kelpie just as the water reached her waist. She stretched up and slid the knife out of her brother's boot, then jumped up and slashed at the Kelpie's mane. The horse hair sizzled when the iron blade touched it. Fergus ripped his hands free and fell into the water. Flora hauled him spluttering to his feet, and they backed away from the horse. The beautiful horse began to change into something huge and ugly and hungry. Steam swirled from its nostrils. Waves swirled around its hooves. Its head arched high above Flora and Fergus. Fergus grabbed the knife from his big sister and waved, waved it at the Kelpie. We have a metal blade. You stay there. You leave us alone. There it is. The Kelpie stood still as Flora and Fergus dragged each other towards the shore, where their brothers and sisters stood shivering and shaking. The Kelpie watched Flora and Fergus struggle out of the water, then it sank into the dark, cold depths of the lock. There it is. Soon the children were safe at home, warming up and drying off. I knew there was something strange about that horse, said Agnes. No, you didn't, said Archie. You thought it was a pretty princess's horse. You thought it was a brave knight's horse, laughed Agnes. Flora knew what it was, said Fergus. She worked out the Kelpie secret, and she saved us. Flora smiled. Let's make the carvings on the stone clearer to warn the next family who plays by the lock. Here they are. Warming up. The Kelpie Stone is still there today, warning a warning to all the local children, and perhaps to you, never to trust a beautiful horse with wet hooves, and always to carry something metal in your pocket. The end. So I'm just going to walk you through the steps here on how to do this uh, Celtic knot craft. Um, you're going to need the help of a grown-up, um, your parent or grandparent or whoever you're with, um, to get this done, especially the first step. Um, but you can do it, so let's go through it here. So the first thing you want to do is just Google Celtic knot uh, printout or printable. Um, and find a knot outline that you like, and then you'll just have to print it off. Um, you can try it on regular paper. It kind of works better on this thicker paper, which is like a card stock. So if you have the ability to print it off on that, that's what I would recommend. Otherwise, paper is going to be fine. 
So that's your first step. So what you're going to do here is you're going to take a glue gun. If your mom has one, if you don't have one in the house, uh, Elmer's glue should work just fine. But this is the part that you're definitely going to need a grown-up of some sort to do this for you. Um, because this glue gun is hot, okay? So we only really want grown-ups handling this. But what you do is you kind of follow the pattern and you fill in the lines with the glue, okay? Okay, the next step, and this is very important, you need to let the glue dry. So I've done this with a glue gun, which dries pretty quickly, and it really is the best way to do this, but we can't go on to the next step until the glue is dry. So just be patient, give it some time, and let it dry. All right, so once it's dry, it's pretty dry, uh, you're gonna get some paint. So I usually use acrylic here, um, but really any kind will work that you normally use for crafts. So I picked some purple and I squeezed some in here. And now the next thing you're gonna do is just gonna take your brush here. I have one of these wide ones, pretty easy to use. I'm just gonna start painting over the whole thing, okay? So when you're done painting, it should look something like this. So now, again, we have to be patient and we have to let it dry before we do our very last step, okay? So the final thing that you're going to do is if you have a hole puncher handy, um, you can punch holes in the top of your Celtic knot painting. Uh, otherwise, the scissors will work if you just want to have a grown-up help you out, cut some uh, holes at the top. And then you can get some twine or some yarn or some string, whatever you have around. And you're going to tie one long string and then just tie the ends here so that you can hang it up. So these Celtic knots have been around since the Middle Ages, 7 to 800 AD is when they started seeing these. Uh, they find them a lot in like illuminated manuscripts. So those are Bibles and things that have elaborate drawings and pictures and colors on them. Um, and the cool thing about them is that they have really no beginning and no end, and so they symbolize eternity. So having that hanging up in your room or in your house is always a good thing. Alright, thanks everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed the story, and I hope you get a chance to make your own Celtic knot painting at home, as long as you have all the right supplies. Um, and we hope to see you guys soon. We're not sure when it's going to be, but when it happens, we'll be ready for you and very excited to see you. So have a good day.